Today we are joined by Cashel Traverdi, our Business Development Manager. With that, I would like to turn it over to Cashel. Thank you, Sharon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are located on this globe. I am Kaushal Trivedi, Business Development Manager for Teledyne ISCO Water Platform. As Sharon mentioned, new regulations are on the way, which will require more PFAS monitoring and hence uh, sampling. So as a leading sampler supplier, we have developed a sampling kit that should make your PFAS sampling easy. Before starting the presentation, let me give you a quick introduction of Teledyne ESCO. Teledyne ESCO was established in 1958. We are located in Lincoln, Nebraska. In 1971, we introduced world first automatic sampler. And since then, we are the world leader. Today's agenda is we will uh, PFAS is a relatively new subject. In past, we have given several webinars where we have gone into detail of PFAS chemicals and their properties. If you are interested, you can go to our YouTube channel and watch those webinars. In today's webinar, we will not go into that much detail but briefly explain what PFAS chemicals are, their sources and concerns they raised. Then we, before going into sampling specific to PFAS, I will provide some sampling basics for the audience that are new to samplers. And as PFAS is present everywhere, extra care needs to be taken in PFAS sampling, and I will explain you what care needs to be taken. As allowable PFAS limits are very low, the smallest chance of contamination must be avoided. To make sampling job easy, Teledyne ISCO has developed a kit, and I'll touch base on that kit. After that, I will discuss about the care needs to be taken in the sample connections and handling. So let's start with PFAS. PFAS, also known as per and polyfluoroalkali substance, they are family of synthetic compounds containing thousands of chemicals formed from fluorine attached to carbon chain. It first came into use in 1940s with introduction of Teflon by DuPont. And today, the family of fluorinated chemicals that sprung from Teflon includes thousands of PFA compounds. PFAS chemicals repels oil, oil and water and have fire retardant properties. As a result, they are getting used in variety of products, such as nonstick cookware, waterproof, clothing, firefighting forms, cosmetics, as well as in some uh, manufacturing process. Here are some examples of industries that uses PFAS chemical. Textile and leather industries use PFAS chemicals to apply coating to repel water, oil, and stain. Paper industry to coat paper to repel grease and moisture. If they are making, let's say, uh, food wrappers, then they need to uh, repel grease and moisture. Metal plating industry for corrosion preventions and molding, uh, molding industries and a lot of people are using PFAS chemical. The carbon and fluorine bond that I talked about is persistent in nature and does not degrade, which has created environment concerns. Decades of heavy use have resulted in contamination of water, soil, 
and blurred in people and animals. As it is bioaccumulative, bio it builds up in living tissues. They never really leave our system and just keep accumulating. As a result, it has also created health concern. It is linked to all kinds of illnesses. Very small dose of PFAS over a long period have uh, altered immune and thyroid functions. It has caused liver disease, lipid and insulin dysregulation, kidney disease, adverse reproductive development, uh, reproductive and development outcomes, and causes cancer too. PFAS use started before they were known to be harmful. So because it has created a health concern, and after realizing these concerns, EPA is putting a lot of efforts to protect public health by proposing national primary drinking water regulation, also known as NPDWR. EPA has developed a strategic roadmap to reduce PFAS, and in that, what is their approach? EPA will account for full life cycle of PFAS, their unique properties, their ubiquity of uses, and the multiple pathways for exposure. EPA will bring deeper focus to preventing PFAS from entering the environment in the first place. A foundational step to reducing the exposure and potential risk of PFAS uh, contamination. So control at the source, basically. EPA will seek to hold polluters and other responsible parties accountable for their actions and for PFAS re uh, remediation efforts. EPA will invest scientific research to fill gaps in understanding of PFAS, to identify additional PFAS may pose human health and ecological risk at which exposure level, and to develop methods to test, measure, remove, and destroy them. EPA will also prioritize protection of dis disadvantaged communities. When taking actions on PFAS, EPA will ensure that disadvantaged community have equitable access to the solution. You will find detailed information on EPA roadmap by visiting uh, the URL that I have put it in, in the slide. Because, uh, because of this initiative, EPA initiatives, and the new regulations are on the way. They are taking new initiatives that they are putting up new, uh, new uh, rules. So for six harmful PFAS, EP has established maximum contamination level goals, which is called as MCLG, which is basically zero. And they know that it is difficult. So they have also identified legally enforceable levels called MCL or maximum contaminant, maximum, maximum contaminant level. You can see whether it's MCLG or MCL are very low limits. It's in parts per trillion, four parts per trillion. These low limits and prefers presence everywhere in the environment, including air, makes PFAS sampling very, very sensitive. You need to take an extra care while sampling for PFAS. EPA, as well as ASTM and ISO have published method, and those methods are different methods for different media. I mean, I say media means either drinking water or wastewater or river water, sludge, so in the first column, I have listed the different EPA methods, ISO and ASTM standards. In the second column, it, it, I list the media for which this method is applied. 
in the third column indicates number of PFAS each method can detect. So for an example, EPA 537.1, third from the top, can detect 18 PFAS. And the last column suggests what analysis techniques should be used for each method. Please note that some of these methods are still in final stage. For example, EPA 1633 is still in a draft form. It is expected to get finalized this quarter, if not this month. It's, it's in the final stage, so it should be finalized any time. And I will say that once it is finalized, it will be asking states to change the permits for IUs. So that's the new regulations that are coming. So new permits will include PFAS monitoring. In the roadmap, they also have provided recommendation for POTWs. They are asking that to establish the universe in the service area and downstream of POTW also. Start with conducting uh, IU inventories. Collaborate with drinking water to determine downstream mis intakes. And consider sludge disposal goals also. The reason is sludge, uh, if PFAS end up in sludge, it end up in a fertilizer, which end up in a, uh, agriculture. And then develop a sampling plan. Use 1633 in conjunction with 1622 include IOs into that in developing the sampling plan and select the sampling location to differentiate industrial versus domestic. The sampling frequency is yet to be defined, but current, currently it appears that uh, at least in a quarterly, you have to do this sampling. Now, if PFAS is detected, then that frequency can go high, but this is current idea so once it is finalized we'll have more knowledge on that and then finally implement the solution set limits revise the permit as i mentioned uh, develop bmps and submit the you know electronic submission of the data epa actually uh, has identified industries that are expected or suspected for PFAS discharge. The list is big, here are a few examples, but permits of these industries will change to include PFAS monitoring for sure. So we talked about, uh, discussed about PFAS chemicals as well as EPA initiatives. So let's go into sampling. For the new users, I will start with some basics, then we'll discuss about sampling specific for PFAS. So basically sampling, there are two types of sampling methods. One is manual grab and second is automatic. In manual grab, the deeper is used, where you lower the deeper or attach the bottle to the deeper, lower it and then collect the samples and transfer into another bottle. The pros of this uh, method is low initial cost, but the cons are that you know it is increased risk of PFAS contamination because you a lot of areas you are touching the samples, so it's a, it's an increased risk of PFAS contamination. Obviously, it is less hygienic because if wastewater come in contact with human, it's not hygienic. It's a time consuming and variation in sample collections that somebody goes uh, it's a manual uh, way to collect the sample so one person can collect sample from the top and some can collect from the bottom it is a variation and it's a represent singular moment in a time so whenever you are sampling only during that time and not over continuous base weekly daily uh, that way the second method is automatic sampling And the pros is it's very hygienic, very quick, and very consistent sampling. The cons is this initial cost is high. 
there are various uh, study and publications available which suggest that automatic sampling is superior to grape sampling here is just couple examples that i have given please note grape sampling is allowed of allowed for pfas what i am saying that auto sampling auto samplers are more efficient and effective so my question is that in case you prefer grape samples then do you know that auto sampler can also take the grape samples and by using auto sampler to take the grape samples it's very easy just lower the suction line and press the button and sample will be taken it's very convenient you don't need to carry the long and different size of rods or poles roll of a suction line it is easy to carry quick simple programming you can program in 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 office before leaving for the site you just put a sample volume there and press the button it will take the sample hygienic as i mentioned no, nothing uh, wastewater does not come in contact with human and less chance of contamination automatic purging because when you use that you can see here in the programming you know on the it started purging on its own so there's less chance of any contamination with the previous samples and less number of touching too i will say one thing that you know in a grab sampling uh, auto sampler instructions if you read the manual it will suggest that remove the pump tube from the discharge line and take a samples in a bottle however if you don't disconnect the sample line the sample will directly go into the bottle and there is nothing uh, you, you don't touch the sample at all now lastly for the basics i will say that you know for the automatic samples there are two ways uh, you can collect the samples one is composite where all the samples over a period goes into single bottle and sequential is basically uh, depending on the times you can or event you can collect samples into different bottle both samplers uh, allow to take sample based on time flow or other event and i will say here that for pfas composite sampling is adequate you don't need to go for sequ sequential so with this basic understanding let's dive into pfas specific sampling requirement So items that are used for PFAS samplings are divided into two major categories. Items that come in direct contact with samples are classified as category one. Items that do not come in direct contact with samples but use at site are classified at, as classif uh, category two. so example of category 1 items and category 2 items for depending on the type of sampling you would like to do so if you are doing let's say manual grab sampling what are the category 1 items sampler container pole zip tie bottles kind of a stuff if you are doing automatic sampling or use auto sampler then the strainer suction line pump tube bottles where you know the sample gets and uh, filled all these are category 1 item category 2 items do not come in contact with samples but they used at the site while collecting the sample what are these items sampler body cooler ice pack gloves jackets footwear wedges sunscreen those kind of stuff now for both category 1 and category 2 general uh, guideline is do not use any material that contains fluoropolymers which is ptfe ectfe pctfe etfe kind of stuff so those items should not be used for category 1 as well as for category 
Now, the most states, DEQs, have published material guidelines that what materials are allowable, prohibited, or require screening. Please visit your website or state website for local guidelines. In this presentation, I will be using material recommendation from Michigan DEQ. Your local guidelines should be more or less same. So here you can see that for category one, uh, allowable material is SDPE, LDPE, polypropylene, silicon, stainless steel natural rubber and those kind of stuff so again coming back for the category one and if you are doing a grab sampling what are the items you should pick this is basically material su suggestion for sample if you are doing grab sampling you should use for sample collection bottle hdpe polypropylene or silicone your rod should be uncoated aluminum or steel. Because should be HDPE or PP. Collection bottles should be HDPE. HDPE stand for high density polyethylene and LDPE stand for low density polyethylene. Now, many times we get a question whether we can use glass bottles or not. Glass bottles can be used, but you have to make sure they are PFAS free. And it is also established that if sample is stored for a longer period, glass absorb the PFAS. So I recommend not to use, or at least don't reuse. Anyway, uh, for grab sampling, uh, cable ties should be natural rubble, nylon, or uncoded metal springs. For automatic sampler, the strainer should be either for stainless steel or HDPE, Tubing coupler, bucket fitting should be stainless steel. Suction line should be LDPE or vinyl. Vinyl, uh, because it is, again, uh, residence time is low, but LDPE is highly recommended. Pump tube is silicon, and collection bottles should be, again, HDPE, LDPE, or PP. Now, cleanliness, uh, actually, all these category items should be decontaminated. Cleanliness of all category uh, one items must be maintained. Actually, disposal of category one item is recommended. But if you cannot do it, then you should at least decontaminate them. And if the same equipment is used at multiple sites, they should be de decontaminated before each sampling event. What are the allowable decontamination material? Alkanox, Liquinox, Citronox, Triple Rains, PFAS water. Those are the recommended material or allowable material. Now, this is going to be a little busy slides, but very important slide because for PFAS sampling, you will need to prepare three types of blank. The first blank is equipment blank, and it is to detect contamination in sampling equipment prior to sampling. In the lab, PFAS-free water should be run through sampling equipment and collected in polyethylene or polypropylene bottles. This blank is prepared in the lab and stay in the lab. Now, it is not compulsory. Some people prefer to do this, uh, prepare this blank in a field. That's fine. It is not a problem, but you know, lab is a much safer environment or office is a much safer environment. The second is a field blank. Now it is to detect any contamination introduced during the sample collections and handling. Bring PFAS free water to the field in HDPE bottles and transfer to another HDPE bottle. So during this process, it will absorb the PFAS that are present at the sampling location. The third blank is a trip blank, and it is to identify areas of exposure such as temperature change, pressure change, etc. This blank is, I will say that it's not very critical for wastewater. It is very important for drinking water. And for this blank, bring PFAS free water 
in the SDPE bottle to the field and return these bottles without opening the cap in the field. So bottle filled with the PFAS free water with the uh, cap on comes with the field goes back. So these three blanks are required for PFAS sampling and note that this is very important because PFAS sampling for PFAS sampling this provides the reference basically. So now let's talk about the PFAS kit. Teleda and ISCO has developed a kit to make PFAS sampling easy. The P purpose of the kit is the main purpose uh, is to make PFAS sampling hassle-free and easy for the users. What we have done that all required items for sampling are in one package. You do not need to identify different vendors or different parts or se placing separate orders. It's all avoided, everything comes in a one kit. And in those items, what we have selected or packed in this kit is we picked, we made sure that the materials of all items are selected based on available guideline. Actually, we did not stop there. We took an extra step and we verified all these items in a third party lab to make sure they uh, make sure that they do not add or absorb any PFAS. For sample collections, we have included disposable sampler bags uh, just to maintain the sample integrity. It also reduces time for decontaminations and it is very cost effective. User can use the sample, uh, this uh, bags at a mul for multiple sampling. So what does this kit includes? The kit includes all category one items and some key category two items also. But let's talk about first the category one items. It includes uh, stainless steel strainer and we have picked up the low profile so that even uh, it can work in if, uh, if the application is a very low flow application. LDP is suction line. As I said earlier, we have vinyl as a standard, but we realize LDP is better selection for the suction line. So we will be including LDP suction line for this PFAS sampling. Silicon pump and discharge tube. Composite ProPack kit, which is basically it is a one holder or bottle, which is made out of a PE with a PP cap or polyethylene with a polypropylene cap. The bottle is designed, uh, is a special design to avoid airlock between bottle and bags when a sample gets filled. And will include 100 pro-pack bags. So it's a uh, re uh, disposable bags. So that will help you. Why we use uh, pro-pack bags or pro-pack kit? because as again I mentioned, the sample integrity is very important. Time saver, because it reduces decontamination. Cost saver, that same bag can be used, or uh, bag is disposable, so bottle can be replenished with another bag and you can use at multiple times the bottle. You don't have to buy new bottles all the time or new sampler all the time. I'm bringing back this category one material recommendation slide that I previously presented. You will see that all items in the kit are from list of allowable material. As I mentioned, we just did not pick the right material. We took an extra step to test them in University of Nebraska and to ensure that they do not add or absorb PFAS. The test results are published in a post poster and the poster is available on our website. The kit also includes some accessories 
for first time user basically the category two items it includes nitrile glows it includes decontamination liquid it includes bottles to prepare blanks and these bottles are hdpe and we included four bottles why because there are four because one is for the equipment blank two for the fill blank and one for the trip blank so four bottles are included we also included pfas free water we also included the instruction how to use kits how to prepare and use the three blanks and how to use propec kit there will be two kits based on a type of sampler one is for the gls sampler which is a small portable sampler the part number is 6029500020 then the second one is for 67 uh, it's advanced sampler 6712 compact full scale or refrigerated it is also applicable for 5800 and blizzard sampler the part number is 6029600 both these kits are identical the only difference is type of pump tube and discharge tube both these kits will release for sale in february so please contact your local reps for the pricing now let's talk about what care needs to be taken for the pfas sampling First, we'll discuss about category two items that you know that are do not come in direct contact with the samples but used uh, at the sampling site, so it may contaminate the samples. And those items are like boots, uh, rain gears, PPE, etc. Here are here also the guidelines are available from state DEQs on what materials is allowable or need screening or prohibited you will no notice here that nitrile glows that we use in our kits are part of the uh, allowable list it is recommended that you don't bring any food to the sampling site and if you want to consume the food please consume the food away from the sampling location so now for the sampling collection what are the bmps or uh, for the sampling collection dust and fiber must be kept out of the sample bottles the sample cap should never be placed directly on the ground it should be placed on sdp sheet do not insert anything in the tubing uh, any items or any material inside the tubing or the bottles and should be well washed and glowed use again hdp ldp category one items the the kit we discussed this will take care of that so you don't have to worry about that it is a great choice kit will be a great choice this is very important for the sampling point, depending on if you are doing a grab sampling, samples should not be collected from the top layer because PFAS presence is very volatile at air and water interface. If you are using automatic sampler, keep strainer and suction line at the desired depth to collect the samples. Bottles should only be opened just prior to the sampling and it should be kept right after the sampling so that no more environment effect in the samples samples should be placed in on an ice within 15 minutes and cool down to temperature less than six degrees centigrade and that temperature should maintain throughout the transit to the lab Nitrile glows should be used, should be changed at every step in the sampling process. After decontamination of sampling equipment, immediately prior to sample collection and every step. And that's the reason we have provided 100 glows in our 
kit. DEQ has also provided guidelines for the material to be used for field documentation. As far as the sampler as the handling is concerned, how should it be stored and preserved? Regular wet ice can be used to keep sample cools, but make sure that it does not come in contact with liquid. Thin HDPE sheeting is also recommended to use. As mentioned earlier, samples should be cooled down to six degrees centigrade and should be maintained, their temperature should be maintained. Most portable refrigerated samplers cool down the samples to four degrees centigrade. So if you are using portable refrigerator samplers, that's the best way to maintain that temperature. If you are using remote lab, please ship the samples as soon as possible. And samples should be shipped in a such a way that temperature is remain below six degrees centigrade. Most labs do provide chain of custody and forms. So please follow that instruct their instruction in transporting the samples. And lastly, I will say, to cool down the samples and maintain temperature below limits, portable, uh, portable refrigerator sampler such as Esco Blizzard will be a very good choice. With that, I'm ending my webinar and I open for questions. Well, thank you, Cashel, um, for providing us uh, this uh, webinar. And um, as he stated, we'll now open for questions. And um, Cashel kindly provided his email address um, just in case you happen to think of a question later on. So with that, um, we'll begin with the first question. Thank you. So the first question, uh, a lot of questions here. The first questions came, uh, or the will slides be made available? Uh, Sharon uh, mentioned uh, in the initial that we will be providing, uh, this webinar is recorded, so we will be providing a recording uh, so that you have all the materials with you. The second question is that I have PVC tubing and I have not found any, anything on whether or not that is permitted for PFAS sampling. Is it acceptable? PVC is acceptable, uh, uh, Mr. Grant. And if you send me in uh, your email, I can send you the guidelines. Uh, you know, I have looked at the California uh, guidelines does indicate very clearly uh, that PVC is acceptable. I can send you uh, those guidelines uh, uh, to you. Uh, are, uh, the third question is, are all Teledyne ISCO samplers proven to be free for PFAS? My answer is yes, provided you use all these category one items. Uh, basically, we, we offer different uh, bottle materials, uh, line materials. So in this kit that I have presented, we have selected from different material, uh, the right material for the PFAS. So samplers are okay. Samplers are considered as a category two item. So as long as you touch it with, uh, with your gloves on, they're absolutely fine. They're made out of ABC, uh, ABS plastics, which is absolutely fine. Um, but only thing you have to take care uh, that you select the category one item uh, we are offering different bottle config bottle materials you must pick the right bottle material and uh, as the suction lines our standard suction line is vinyl but as you noticed here that we recommend ldpe and that is what we had included in our uh, in our kit and as i mentioned that you know those kits that we have uh, selected all the materials we have tested with an external labs so we are quite confident so samplers are okay provided you use uh, right material uh, which i had mentioned in this presentation or you can use the kit if we have all the comp oh, sorry question four if we have all the components of pfas kit except the bags 
can the bags be purchased separately yes you can buy a pro pack kit that i had mentioned uh, you can buy it separately from us uh, having said that i just make sure that your uh, suction line is uh, good enough uh, and uh, pump tubes and everything is uh, in, the, in the right way buying a kit is kit is not that expensive uh, compared to the propec bag kit but it is your choice yes we can sell propec kit as a as a separate item uh the next question is what are the disposable liner bags made of they are made of ldpe uh, and that is what one of the acceptable category one item and we have tested that again in a third party lab so uh, it should be uh, okay for pfas sampling the next question like i came in few minutes after the presentation started but will this webinar be recorded and available for a viewing later yes it will be available uh, uh, for viewing later it's a recorded webinar so you should get it uh the next question is when i use up all the propec bags in the kit how do i order more bags uh good question uh, so as i mentioned earlier you can buy propec kits from us uh, as a separate line item but uh, this question is like if you use uh, used up all your propec kits there are very uh, good chances that you also run out of your life for the pump tubes so you will need a new pump tubes uh, and uh, you know suction line also is the, by the time 100 sampling you have done it so it is the right time to change the suction line so i recommend rather than buying a propec kits you buy a, uh, uh, this uh, pfas kit from us which will give you a lot of other stuff than just a propec kit but if you want pro just propec kit that's fine we can we you can order we have uh, a part number for that and i can uh, you know you can contact your local reps or distributor they can quote you for that Have you performed equipment blanks on the peristaltic, uh, peristaltic inner pump flexible silicon tubing? We did uh, not the, uh, yes, we did actually, uh, you are talking about, sorry, equipment blank. I was thinking of field bank, but no, equipment blank, yes. And that is what the poster that I was talking about. We have uh, tested, we have uh, immersed that and we have made sure that uh, pump tubes or silicon tubes are okay now i will also say one thing that uh, amongst all these item uh the pump tubes are the least uh, concern for a reason because the residence time is very minimal so uh, that is the reason uh, you should be uh, less concerned about the pump tubing I expect the suction line and peristaltic pump line is to be used as a new material and not washed or reused. Uh, if you decontaminate that, you should be able to reuse this item. But you are correct that, you know, basically, uh, uh, you know, every time if you use a new material, that will be much better options. Uh, the next questions i think you have to send me an email to elaborate that what is the strainer code i don't know what you mean by the i'll say that strainer material is uh, stainless steel so which is acceptable for pfas i don't know whatever a, a code is uh, but it's a stainless steel material and length is roughly four to five inch length uh, for the strainer is vinyl suction line okay for pfas sampling yes vinyl is one of the acceptable material however ldpe is much recommended uh, because it has uh, it does not absorb or introduce any of the pfas so ldpe is much recommended uh, uh, suction line material
uh, we run blanks on the HDPE tubing and they all came back ND or NQ means non-detect, I guess. Uh, and so I know HDPE is fine. That is absolutely correct. HDPE is up. It's, it's fine for this PFAS sampling. Uh, just curious about silicon. Silicon we are not using except for the perm tube. And as I mentioned, it is very small resident time. Uh, so it does not have absorb or introduce any PFAS. What is the capacity of uh, ProPack sample bags? Uh, it's a 2.5 gallon. That's our uh, the ProPack bag capacity. Should we run equipment blank on the on the sampler? Uh, no, because sampler is category two items, not category one. Uh, you should run the equipment blank only on category one item. Now. But category two items, you have to make sure that you touch it with your nitrile glows. Uh, but other than you don't need to uh, run or run a equipment blanks on a sampler. What is the battery life of the pro, uh, portable refrigerator? samplers it all depends on your sampling frequency it can last up to a week but you it's all depend on your sampling frequency shall we use pfas kit for a different sample for repeatable time uh, the ProPack bag, you should, that, that's a disposable bag and that should save a lot of time for, you know, decontaminations and everything. That's the reason. But you should not uh, use the same ProPack bag uh, for different sampling. You should use new ProPack bag for every sampling. What is the battery life for portable refrigerator? Uh, if it is you are running only on a battery, it should last easily last for 48 hours. What is the lowest detectable contamination for the PFAS using EPA approved method? So depending on the, uh, it's basically as far as the PFAS limit is, it's, they are talking about four parts per trillion. Uh, some of the document also says 2.5 parts per trillion, but uh, so far, you know, it's, this is uh, four parts per trillion, a trillion. And it is not depending on the method. That's the MCL we talked about. Uh, methods are depending on the how many PFAS and what media you use. Uh, so what method you should use to detect the PFAS. So don't uh, uh, correlate method with the limit. Limit is established and method is only for the media that you use and number of PFAS that you want to find out. Should samplers or PFAS sampling only be dedicated to PFAS sampling application? It is highly, highly recommended that you use a dedicated sampler for PFAS. This is just to avoid any contamination. PFAS limits are low. It's very uh, ubiquitous in the natures and very uh, great chance of easy, easily get contaminated. So it is highly, highly recommended that you use a specific sampler for PFAS. Um, you avoid core contamination and you avoid any uh, false positive or false negative by using dedicated sampler. So we, we strongly recommend uh, using dedicated sampler for PFAS. Can I use a PFAS kit, teledynescope PFAS kit for non uh isco samplers yes you can use it uh the only difference will be the pump 
tubes or discharge tube that's the silicon material otherwise suction line propac bags uh, should be used if you are using uh, your uh, two uh, composite sampling single bottle composite sampling non isco samplers you can still use uh, uh, propac kit from teledyne isco it is not uh, sampler specific but as, as i mentioned only difference will be uh, what kind of uh, uh, pump tubes and discharge tube that make is using can i use this kit for existing isco sampler or i have to buy a new sampler you can use for existing sampler but as i again mentioned it is recommended that you have a dedicated sampler and if you have a sampler in your inventory isco sampler in your inventory you should be able to use that please select the right uh, uh, part number out of two if you are using gls uh, what uh, the part number that you have to pick is for the gls and if you are using other sampler you should pick it but yes you can use if you have an existing isco sampler you can use that uh, but if you are looking for dedicated then you may consider want to uh, have a new sampler Will category one items uh, be placed in a sealed bag? Yes, that is uh, most uh, the uh, the tubes, uh, the suction lines, strainers, everything will be packed in a sealed bag. So your packing material, the idea is the packing material uh, will not affect or will not uh, come in contact with this category one material. What is the whole time for PFAS sampling? Now, good questions. So, uh, the one thing is, uh, as I mentioned, that you know, once you take the sample and following say, uh, EPA method 1633, you should cool it down to six degrees centigrade within 15 minutes. And if you maintain that temperature, uh, you should be fine holding it for a long time and provided you have selected the right material for holding don't use glass use stpe bottles uh, or leave it in a, this ldpe bags uh, that we are providing uh, propec bags uh, you can hold it provided you maintain that temperature earlier when the pfas was new there uh, uh, at that time the guideline was that you should send the samples within three days or 72 hours but later on, it was uh, found that you know, there are a lot of uh, areas uh, where they cannot send sampler in a sense. So the guideline was a little bit revised, but they would like to uh, maintain that during the entire hold time, you sh the temperature should not go up above six degrees centigrade. I don't have any more question, uh, Sharon. Yes, well, thank you, Cashel, for answering all the questions that have been submitted. And um, we would like to thank all of our attendees for joining us today.